We're in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3. We're going to read verse 8 and 9. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devour devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Well, it's 6 o'clock a.m. here, and I uh, wanted to do kind of a follow-up to my last video about don't give them too much credit, you know, don't, what are they doing and all that other stuff. Um, and I read that verse of scripture here this morning in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, because it's very important to understand, again, that God is in control. If you're saved, your heavenly Father controls everything. And you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's really a neat thing to think about. And um, that's why I want to title this video something like, uh, Don't Give Satan Credit for What God is Doing. Uh, and a lot of people do. They think that uh, Satan is just so powerful and everything, and he's a lot more powerful than most people, than all people. Um, but he's not as powerful as God. And you see this whole thing of this uh, new world order that's coming, the one world government that's coming, it's all part of God's plan. God already wrote all about it. And, uh, you know, this uh, whole thing of our president here in America right now, Joe Biden, Oh, why would God allow such an evil man as Joe Biden to be in there? Well, because the people are evil. The people are wicked. And uh, that's why we have Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden is actually a pretty good representation of the American people right now. <laughs> um, very old, very senile, very... And I don't mean elderly people. I'm talking about uh, people that are acting you know, in very insane, crazy ways, um, it's terrible. I mean, you have people that are being turned over to a reprobate mind, as the Bible warns about God giving people over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Uh, convenient things, if you want to go with the Bible rendering of it, would be things that just make common sense. Or, or that are common sense, I'll say it that way. And uh, you have people that are doing things now, they don't even know what they are, what gender they are, <laughs> what sex they are, in other words. They're male or female, I don't really know for sure. Uh, that could change from week to week. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I mean, all the different things that are going on right now, it's, it's insanity. I guess it's not really wrong to steal anymore if... You know, you can steal up to $950,000 worth of stuff and not uh, call that theft or something. It's just a kind of a misdemeanor or something. No, it's stealing. It's wrong. Thou shalt not steal. But you have all these people down there. They're just saying, well, where's the sta standard at? Well, the standard is there. It's always been there, and it always will be there. But it's the standard that people have rejected because people are God-hating reprobates. That's what they have turned into. Most people now could qualify for that very thing. They are people that are, uh, they just hate God. That's the whole thing. Oh, I'm an atheist. I, I reject God on the basis of science. Please, give me a break. Um, just like you reject your, your sex uh, and whatever else because you don't feel that it's the right thing for you or whatever else. I mean, anybody that can look at this world right now rationally, in a logical way, and they can look and they can say, um, there are people that are just flat out rejecting real true science. They say, well, we have new science. It's the new normal, we have new science. Uh, no, science is science, okay? You see this? That's a green leaf, okay? Well, maybe it's not. It could be a pink cupcake. No, it's a green leaf. That's the way it's been. For thousands of years well but but see with the modern atheistic think where we have to hate god and despise our creator um we have to just question everything now and it's the only the only way forward is to question everything we've always known uh that's insanity 
all right i mean think about some of the stuff that we have we have um disease now that does not produce symptoms still blows my mind um you know the uh slovid 19 um is it's coming back we should probably start to do the things we did before to mitigate the danger of slovid and we have to do that well i'm a little confused doesn't viral virology teach that there's mutation so you can't really say 19 anymore it should be you know 23 2023 uh, wouldn't there be new variants and things and you can't really classify them as the, what they were, you know, four years ago? Interesting too, four years ago. Hmm, what were you doing, going through? Oh, that's right, we were about ready to change from one presidential regime to another one. Huh. I, of course, there's no connection there. There's nothing that would be, you know, similar and, and things uh, that they try to pump up fear to make people react in certain ways and whatever. Um... It's not behavioral modification or anything else. No, it, it definitely is not that. Um, we're just trying to keep you safe. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, it's insanity. Uh, you have a, a thing that you carry around called a smartphone. And you should put all of your personal information on it to prove how smart you are. And it should help to control you and you can be tracked with it and traced with it and everything. And um, that's very important. You have to have it. Uh, well, wouldn't it actually be considered to be a little bit dumb to do that? You know, putting all your information onto something that's the easiest thing in the world to track and hack into. You know, I remember seeing a video a while back with uh, John McAfee, which he's a very wicked man, but uh, the, the McAfee software, you know, that for protecting your computer. And he said, iPhones are the easiest things to hack into of all computers out there and you're watching videos on this little tiny screen you know i mean have a laptop would be better or a, a nice desktop computer that's you know two monitors you know and i understand somebody's going to say well brother i have to have one for my job it's it's all about my job okay i get that i understand that you know somebody says that but then don't carry it around with you all the time all right i mean my job is a video I do video ministry. That's what I do. Do you see me walking around with my computer? No. I've got a, a, a camera here. I'm thinking <laughs> the phone thing. I don't have a phone. I have a camera. Canon SX740HS. That's what I use. Um, I've talked about that in other videos. I'm not going to carry around a computer with me. That doesn't make any sense. You know, they, they're actually tailoring clothing right now making clothing that has cell phone pockets on it uh, you don't need a computer with you at all times unless you don't trust your brain that god gave you there's a big dragonfly flying past there it was pretty neat he's getting the bugs for me come on back around um you know again there's so many things and another one of my favorite ones is uh artificial intelligence think about that for a minute um, <clears throat> if I said to you that this is artificial foliage what would that mean it means it's fake it's not real foliage artificial intelligence is it real intelligence or artificial fake intelligence <laughs> you know uh, fake intelligence but don't worry we're going into the future with this. I mean, Jetson's uh, future, here we come, flying around in spaceships, having robots do all of our work. It's going to be wonderful. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Um, well, we're planning this brave new world. Uh, no, actually, God, is his purpose is to gather all the nations together so that he can pour out his indignation. Well, we're, we're envisioning a great revised Holy Roman Empire with the Pope, the, the coming future Pope, uh, we call him the man of sin, the Antichrist, but uh, this he's coming and he's going to bring world peace and, and we're going to... No, actually, the Bible says exactly what it's going to be. And it'll last for seven years. You know? I mean, Obama was president longer than that. Think about that. 
two terms in office. It's eight years. The Antichrist can't even do that good. <laughs> you know, it's just funny to think about. All the work and everything that they're doing and just faking us out with all this printed money and all this, oh, look at us. We have all this debt and everything else and we can, we're building a brave new world. Yeah, that's going to last for eight years. Or, excuse me, seven years. Seven years. That's all the better you can do. <sighs> Unreal. But that's what they have planned. I tell you, the greatest, brightest minds that we can produce from academia are the strongest uh, weapons that we can make in the military. You know, the time's coming when we won't need soldiers anymore. We'll just have our video game, little frail little video game soldiers in bunkers, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, playing with their video games and flying drones to attack the enemy and, and uh, directed energy weapons, um, which they admit to, by the way. I might do a video on that. Uh, I mean, there's multiple videos on YouTube from the military, uh, from Lockheed Martin, talking about directed energy weapons that they can Basically, I mean, the one they actually showed that there's a drone flying in the sky and they hit it with a directed energy weapon and it burns up. You know, we have these big lasers and ultra powerful lasers and everything else. And, um, <clears throat> well, let me explain something, okay? Let me explain something about how military type of things work, okay? I'm not former military, whatever, but I've studied it extensively. I'm married to my wife. She was in two branches of the military. So I do understand a few things. Okay, um, the way military works is like this. If you want to have infantry, you can pretty much get any man that's in decent shape and, you know, fairly good shape anyhow. And you can say, okay, son, here's a rifle. Here's how you shoot it. See if you can hit that target over there. Good. Okay, can you carry this pack on your back? Can you do this? Can you do that? Oh, yes, I can, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, go on. There's the enemy over there. Go get them. All right. Um, oh, he got shot. Okay, another one. Come on, you. Up here, train you. Here's your gun. Here's your pack. Here, go in. Okay, it's a, something that you can replace fairly quickly. But when you get highly technical things in warfare, if that guy gets killed, now you have a major problem because there's not many guys that are trained that way. Okay, um, helicopter pilots in warfare are a target of opportunity for snipers because there aren't many men that can fly helicopters. Okay, the average soldier cannot fly a helicopter. So um, you get these guys and they're very highly trained and whatever else. Well, oh, look at this. We have this new 21st century, you know, soldier. It's this highly trained guy that can fly drones and whatever. What if he gets killed? What if uh, the enemy sends in a bunker buster missile, missile or some of these new hypersonic things and whatever? Boom, takes out the bunker, and there goes all your little techie guys. They all got wiped out. Or, you know, the enemy finds out how to get in there, and they come in, and now there's a hand-to-hand -hand combat or some other type of thing. You know, I mean, World War II, that's one of my favorite subjects to study, and my son adores World War II. He's reading a whole big, thick book, 500-plus page book right now on World War II. And, uh... You know, he's doing a good job at it. He's almost halfway through it already. And World War II, I mean, it just, it reminds me of, of the old uh, Yosemite Sam and Bugs Bunny cartoon, you know. Back when I was a boy, I'd watch that and they'd have, you know, Bugs Bunny, he'd come running in with a gun chasing Yosemite Sam and it'd go off screen and then Yosemite Sam would come back with a bigger gun and then Bugs Bunny would come with a cannon and then Yosemite Sam would come back with a bigger cannon, you know. And that's World War II. Oh, well, the, you know, the uh, Nazis had the Panther tank. And the Americans, they created the Sherman tank. Well, then the Nazis created the Tiger tank. And then they created the King Tiger tank. And they were going to do the Rat tank. And what, it was a little bit big. And they were thinking, yeah, but the bombers could bomb it. And yeah, that's true. And, you know, the Japanese had the Yamato, the biggest battleship ever built. And it got sunk, not by another boat, but by airplanes. Every man in his best state is altogether vanity, is what that proves. It proves scripture, once again. Oh, well, we're going to have an even greater thing. Someday we're going to have this Antichrist kingdom. 
and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be so technologically advanced. Smart cities. You won't believe the internet speeds that we have, virtual reality and everything else. You know why they have to create virtual reality? Think about it. Um, I can handle reality. You can handle reality. They have to change reality. <laughs> virtual reality. Uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be such a failure, you know, as far as what man can do, that they're going to have to deceive them into thinking that they're succeeding. Put on your VR headset. Wow, look at the amazing new world. What's that? Oh, it's actually trash that you're walking into. Um, and there's people that are all just skinny and looking terrible, but you put your VR headset on and wow, what a world. What an amazing thing that we've achieved here. You know, <laughs> what a mess. Uh, just a bunch of nonsense. Well, I, I think I'm just going to wait to get saved. I think I'll, I'll hold off because I want to see what happens. Remember, I had a Jew tell me that the one time. He said, well, he said, according to your New Testament, he said the Bible, your New Testament there in the book of Romans, it says that, uh, that we're blinded, you know, as a people. We don't, we can't see things and whatever else. And he said, so, uh, he said, I can see some of what you're saying. Yeah, I think you make some good points, but I'm going to wait. I think I'm going to wait and see if this, you know, time of Jacob's trouble thing. I mean, it says it in the Old Testament, but I'm going to wait and see just how bad it is and whatever. And, and then I'll decide if I want to get saved. Uh, that's not good advice. Okay, that's actually very dumb advice. So, uh, understand out there, brethren, you do understand it, but if you're lost and you're watching this video, I want you to understand what the Bible is. The Bible is not some kind of a terrible book and, oh, it's, it's just so bloody and whatever. The Bible records how bad man is and how good God is. And God, in His mercy, gives us life. He gives us everything that we need if you follow Him. See, there's conditions with your salvation. You don't get to say, well, I'm just going to, what do I have to do? I'll believe Jesus died on the cross. Okay, yeah, sure, done. I'm saved now. No, for God to save you, God wants you to understand His Word, to love His Word, to follow His Word. Okay? Um, when you get saved, the Lord, it says about take my yoke upon you and learn of me. All right? It isn't just some kind of a thing of you're living a miserable, rotten life and the Lord says, okay, you're saved now. You get to go to heaven when you die and you say, wow, thank you. Uh, can you help me out with some issues I'm having? Oh, no, you know, whatever. I, I can't help you. No. The Lord says, I'm going to tell you about what I call sin. I'm going to explain some things to you so that you can have a much better life. Um, you know, and I've seen it. I'm living proof. A man that was, you know, in my twenties, I actually feel better now. I'm, I, you know, as a boy, I got, I was very sickly. I had, uh, was diagnosed with mitral valve prolapse when I was very young, heart murmur, and, uh, had a weak heart ever since then. And, um, I've had to struggle with that all my life, and uh, I loved candy and junk food, and just lived on that stuff. And I just, I'd get sick. I'd be sick for a long time. And I mean, I've I've been through so much pain and just felt like I'm on my deathbed so many times in life because of just terrible diet and whatever. It's just nutrition. It wasn't some kind of a thing of, oh, I have some special disease or whatever else. No, I just need to fix up my nutrition. Start to eat the food that God makes. You know, not what man makes with all the processed junk in it. And again, people, oh, I know what you're saying, brother, but you know, uh, man, listen to me. Take my advice. Um, the Bible talks about this stuff. You know, being thankful for what God gives you and, and eating the right types of foods. Um, so there's that. The Bible version issue. Uh, well, I think that the best ways to do it is just to to rely on the Greek, which means 40 different, you know, editions of Greek texts, uh, some from different parts of the world, in terms of Alexandrian versus Syrian, uh, Egyptian versus Syrian, I'll say it that way, um, different texts and things, different people that made uh, variations of Greek texts, you can get into the whole thing. Um, but I think that we should rely on 
the Greek. And, uh, and we'll have different interpretations. And you just never really know for sure what the Bible is. Um, or you can actually use the one that, that God has been blessing for 400 plus years. The authorized version, later called the King James Version. Uh, there's a reason that it's lasted for so long. A lot of these new versions that came out to update the King James Bible, they came and they've, they've come and gone. And they're no more. Nobody even uses them anymore. So, uh, I mean, there, there's just so many different things to think about. But, you know, as we're looking at this whole system coming and what's going on with BRICS and, and uh, who all is going to join the BRICS nations and what's the future of NATO and the American continent and who's going to take over and what everything is controlled by god every single bit of it you know and oh but you know the the illuminati they created the directed energy weapons and they're they're burning this and they're doing that and whatever we have proof positive we have proof that the devil's behind this and be, the devil's behind that well that's only partly true as i talked about before the devil is just one of god's servants He's the, uh, the vicious attack dog, so to speak, that the devil, the Lord just says, okay, go on out there and take care of that. <laughs> you know, these people are being wicked. They're rejecting my word. They're rejecting me. Okay, Satan, go on, get them, boy. Come on, sick them. Go on out there. And when the Lord's done using the devil for that purpose, he sends him to the lake of fire. You know, you say, well, that's not fair. He's a servant of God and, and God is telling him what to do. That's not fair. Um, Satan had free will. Satan rebelled against the Lord. Back in the Garden of Eden, he had the free will to leave Eve alone. He didn't do it. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to take away God's uh, creation. And he wanted Eve to worship him. And, um, I mean, just keep things basic. Oh, but what about this and what about that? Just go with what the Bible teaches. So, um, God will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to bear, the Bible says, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. God is going to allow things to happen in this world. He's allowing um, the slow vid type of stuff to come back. Why? Because people didn't learn their lesson the first time. A lot of people did the hokey pokey and they turned themselves around and they're now in the ground. You know, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around and end up in the ground. <laughs> uh, foolish. Very foolish. Uh, what more can I say about it? I mean, I could go off and explain all the science behind it and everything and why you should just say uh, no. Um, but why? Why? If it's one of God's ways that he's going to punish these wicked people, then what's the point? Oh, you want to believe in things like that? You want to believe in, in deception and, and things? Well, uh, God will send you strong delusion that, you sh that they should believe a lie. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about that. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. If you want to have pleasure going against what God tells you to do, that's your own problem. See? God's got that whole thing worked out. You say, well, who do you think we're going to have win the election? I know who's going to win the election. I'm going to tell you right now, 100% sure word of prophecy, I'm going to tell you who wins the election. You ready? The 2024 election? Who's going to win? Here we go. The very worst person for the job. That's who's going to win the election. Why? Because America has not repented. America has not turned. America has not said, God, please, we're sorry. Please forgive us. I mean, do you realize that America used to have national fasting days? Let's pray. Pray and fast. Do you realize that America used to uh, fear God? Even the worst Americans knew what the Bible was. They knew it was the King James Bible. Now, you know, well, the Bible's my preference. I get to make my own Bible. I'll use a ESV or an NIV or whatever else, and then I'll correct it with the Greek. And the Greek, too, you know, it's not just that you have 40 different Greek texts. 
and multiple editions of those different texts that have been brought out by people. But then the definition of the Greek words, the different lexicons, there's multiple lexicons that contradict each other. You know, Thayer was a Unitarian. You know, so you get these unbelievers telling you what Greek words mean and you say, oh, and you start to study it and you say, I don't think the King James Bible was tr translated correctly. I don't think it was. Wow, my faith has been shaken in the King James Bible. And now I need to use a new version and then I'll just create my own Bible. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. Congratulations, Satan's just uh, deceived you. Or you can just be a dumb bunny like me, and like a lot of my dumb bunny viewers out there, according to the ways of the world, and uh, just believe the King James Bible. Hey, it's been around for a long time. It's blessed a lot of people. It's changed my life. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to see if this works. Um, you see, my religion, my belief, is based on the King James Bible. What's written in there? It's not open for question. It's not open for, oh, somebody can come along and say, well, actually, I can show you that a Greek word should be translated differently. You know, I saw this guy, uh, he's in a precious metal type of stuff and whatever. I'll watch some of his videos once in a while. And, and he said about, he quoted some new version where it talks about uh, in Revelation chapter six about um, that there would be famine and that a, you know, a measure of wheat for a penny and he said, actually, he said, the Greek word. Sounds so neat when you do that, you know. I mean, pat yourself on the back when you can say, actually, <clears throat> the Greek word should literally be translated as. And he said, it shouldn't be penny. It should be a uh, denarius would be the Greek word. Uh, well, um, no, because you see, the translators of the King James Bible, they knew what they were doing. And they weren't just writing about first century Roman coins. They were writing about a prophecy for the end times. Okay, something that you can't understand yet because the book of Revelation has not been unsealed. Jesus Christ does that. But he said, you know, in this new version, it said a, a day's wages, a measure of wheat for a day's wages. And he said that back in the first century, a denarius was uh, what a man would earn in a day. So that's, it's a, it's an accurate reading. Uh, it's it's the the Greek should actually be actually what uh, the guy didn't understand is the difference between formal equivalence and dynamic equ equivalence. Formal equivalence and the textual criticism means that you're translating a Greek word to an English word as close as possible. So whatever the Greek word is there, you say okay, how is this best accurately translated into English? You know, and you translate it straight over. Formal equivalence means, well, see, in the first century, a denarius was a man's a, a day's wages, so we'll put a day's wages into the text. But the problem with that is, that's not what the Greek text said. That's your interpretation of the Greek text. Even if it was correct, even if it was right, it still is your interpretation of the Greek text and not the Greek text itself. See? And you get into all that stuff there. There's a dragonfly on the ground here. Looks like he's eating something. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Whoop, excuse me. Let's see if I can get him here. Uh, where is he? All right, there he is. Two of them. I think they're mating or something. Sorry, I know this is probably very embarrassing for you, but... Uh, There you go. Come on, focus. All right. I'll let you have some peace. I don't know if they're fighting or mating. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, I love dragonflies, they're one of my favorite bugs because they kill little annoying insects that fly around my head. I remember years ago, uh, the one time there was a deer fly was coming right at my head and this dragonfly went, woof, just got it right about here, you know, got it and he went over and he was sat on this guy's tractor where I was at and, and he's over there eating this deer fly. Uh, thank you, 
Thank you, Lord, for sending the dragonfly. Protect me from the biting deer fly. But uh, anyhow, see, even God controls that. So to finish up this video, when you truly understand what's going on, you can look out at this world and say, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. My God controls it all. I'm not worried about it. We have to defeat the new world order. We have to stop the new world order. Humanity needs to come together, whatever that is. Humanity needs to come together and we need to defeat the new world order. You can't. Why? Because it's God the creator's design. He's going to assemble the kingdoms. He's going to bring them all together. They're uh, down there and they're saying, let's, uh, let's come together. I'm a proud atheist. I'm a graduate of Yale. I'm Skull and Bones. I'm this, I'm that. I'm a Bilderberger. I'm a whatever. Let's uh, see how we can defeat the Lord. And we'll just get rid of this God of the Bible. And the time will come when science will replace God and we won't need God and all this. <laughs> and God's up in heaven just going, <laughs> you know? I mean, I, it's funny because you do the same thing when you're saved. I hear the news and things and these people come out and they say, Oh, uh, you know, we now uh, identify as something or other and whatever. And you just go, what? <laughs> huh? You know, you start laughing. And uh, yeah, we've uh, we've just decided that that uh, you now have to do something. And you're just going, huh? And you just laugh. So why do you do that? Because God is. And if you're saved, you're part of God's body. Uh, connected spiritually to God, the Creator. And so we can look and we can do the same things that He does. You know? I'll come in sometimes, I'll be listening to something and I'll start laughing and I come in, my wife says, what, what's going on? And I tell her and she starts laughing. She says, what? The people said that? Or, are you kidding? You know? Well, I am betrothed to Jesus Christ in a spiritual sense. And uh, so my heavenly husband so to speak he he finds some things very very funny when these people are trying to we're going to stop the new world order the lord's up there going <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> all right yeah we're all going to come together so we can fight the common enemy wouldn't that be the new world order yeah that's right uh and the lord just go <laughs> look at that <laughs> you know making fun of them mocking them up in heaven it's what the bible teaches and down here on the earth we say oh, lord what's so funny Oh, look at this article. Let me, the Holy Spirit here, I'll guide you into all truth. Look at that. Look at this. Look what these people are planning. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, here's a guy. He, he used to be a commanding officer in the military. Now he wears a skirt. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> you know? Oh, we're going to go out and we're going to hunt Christians down. Hold on, I need to put my lipstick on here. <laughs> okay. You know? We're building a brave new world where we're going to have carbon credits and we're going to force people to do things. You know, and you just go, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, what can I say? Um, but don't, you know, you have to redo your thinking. I have to redo my thinking, brethren. And you just simply say, uh, don't give the devil credit for what the Lord's doing. All right? That's the message of this video. Uh, God has got some really neat things planned for us, his children. And, uh, it's not already happened in the past, you wicked devils out there. Um, there's a thousand year kingdom coming that will, wherein dwelleth righteousness. When God is going to return a pure language that anybody can call on the Lord. And uh, he's going to put away sin. He's going to put away the idols out of the land. It's going to be wonderful. And it's coming. We're going to be able to walk around out here, whatever. You know, the Lord's going to restore the earth after the time of Jacob's trouble. You don't have to worry about the wild animals getting you. You don't have to worry about bad guys getting you. God's got it all taken care of. So no matter what happens, brethren, I know some of you are in really bad situations. And you tell me and I just think, oh, I'll pray for you. But I don't know how to advise you. I'm sorry to hear about that. But you know... Uh, it's just temporary. Just temporary. God's going to fix it all up. So, 
hopefully this has been a little video to encourage you. I do have some videos I need to be recording in the studio. Had a lot of things to do. Um, paying property taxes and uh, post office fees and, and everything else. I have a big garage bill I need to pay yet. And, and uh, so all the fun things that come with living down here on the earth. You just have to you deal with it. You take care of it. You say, okay, whatever. I have other things to do that are more important. Uh, choose your battles wisely. Don't waste your time, you know, fighting against things that God doesn't care about. Remember that one. That's very important. So, uh, but uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like the video. It helps with the whole thing of the algorithms, not, you know, completely burying my videos. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Go check out the website kjvm.org or kingjamesvideoministries.com either one works and uh, so we'll let you know about uh, future plans and whatever in upcoming videos but that will be it for this one thank you very much for watching